The Silk Road was one of the most crucial economic routes in the world prior to the Age of Discovery. Many goods were transferred via the Silk Road, but the silk itself was the primary commodity and was in high regard throughout the Old World. This is the story of one of the earliest examples of industrial espionage, the story of how the Roman Emperor Justinian stole the technology of silk production from China. Our sponsor today is Wix. Wix is a website builder that gives you the freedom to create a website designed specifically for your needs. Wix's advanced editor tool allows you to format your website to your liking, offering hundreds of templates and unique apps that you can add to your site, like Media Galleries, which allows you to showcase images and videos in a fully customizable gallery. We were able to build our new website using a professional Wix template, reworking it to our liking. Our website features all things kings and generals, where you can see all of our YouTube videos and subscribe so you never miss one. See our Facebook feed, access our merchandise and connect with us on all of our social media channels. Thanks to our followers for their continued support of our channel and thanks to Wix for sponsoring us. Build your own site by clicking on the link in the description or entering the URL wix.com slash kings and generals. Wild silk is produced by many types of caterpillar throughout temperate regions of Asia and Europe. The Chinese industrialized this process by domesticating the mulberry silkworm sometime around 4000 BC. This new product was of a much higher quality and was easier to dye, so it soon became a luxury fabric in China. The emperors guarded the secret of its production in order to keep it a monopoly. In the 2nd millennium BC, silk started appearing in Central Asia and found its way to Iran, India, Egypt and Europe by the end of the 1st millennium BC, becoming a staple luxury of ancient trade. The Scythians and the Achaemenid dynasty were making a fortune as the middlemen, and the latter used their famous royal road as a continuation of the Silk Road. Alexander of Macedon was the first to connect the Greek world to the Silk Road directly when he founded Alexandria Escite, and his successors used it to their advantage. The Romans established trade with India through Egypt in order to acquire silk, and their economy flourished from the high customs duty, as Roman nobility were ready to pay exorbitant prices. However, that meant that gold was flowing out of the Roman Empire and to China and Iran. Eventually, the lack of gold became fatal for the Romans and led to the crisis of the 3rd century and then the fall of the Western Empire. The Germanic conquerors also liked silk, so the Eastern Roman Empire turned into a middleman, reselling silk bought from China via the Sassanid Empire. The Silk Road was hardly protected at this point. China was going through a period of disunity from 420 to 589, and the risky journey from China to Constantinople was taking more than seven months, while the sea route was full of pirates and other dangers of seafaring. At the same time, the Sassanids and the Romans were at war almost all the time, and that was slowing down or stopping the silk trade completely. Emperor Justinian I attempted to change this situation in order to procure silk. Alternative routes via Lazica and Axum were tried. The first was relatively successful, but its length was decreasing the profits, and as this route was passing through the less civilized lands, many caravans may have been lost. The sea route from Ethiopia to India was blocked by the Sassanid fleet. Entire Roman merchant fleets were confiscated by the Sassanids. That wasn't good enough for the Roman Emperor. During that period, Justinian restored control over North Africa, Italy and Spain, which was a political victory but strained the economy of the empire even more. According to the famous contemporary historian Procopius, two Nestorian monks approached Justinian sometime in the 550s. They had travelled to China, Central Asia and the Sassanid Empire and were returning from India to Constantinople. They claimed that they could solve the Emperor's silk problem, for a price. Justinian promised to bestow them with gifts and the monks started their adventure. The sources are conflicted here, as some claim that they travelled on a ship to India and then to China, 
and some say that they moved via the northern route. Even the dates are not clear, but we know that these monks spent two years on the road between 552 and 563. The secret of the silk industry was protected by the Chinese imperial dynasties, yet the disunity that we noted previously was probably detrimental to this practice. We don't know if these monks received any help from the locals, but they were allowed to see and learn the process. Mulberry silkworms are delicate creatures, so the Chinese probably weren't expecting them to be stolen, as the perpetrators wouldn't be able to keep them alive. But the monks had a plan. They secretly hid either the eggs or the larvae of the silkworms in their canes, and also asked the locals to gift them the mulberry bushes that the worms ate. The monks also probably had help in Sogdiana, the northern Caucasus and Crimea, as many natives converted to Nestorianism in the 5th century. One thing is clear. By the time they returned to Constantinople, there were enough mulberry bushes there for the silkworms to eat and procreate, so the whole affair was well planned. Justinian and his successor Justin II created silk industry centers in Beritus, Prusa and Moria. Although Chinese silk was still considered superior due to its quality, the Chinese and Sassanid silk monopoly was broken and the Roman emperors had a new source of revenue. The silk trade became central to the economic dominance of Constantinople and the rise of the Italian merchant republics. One of the earliest cases of industrial espionage was a success. We will make more videos about economics and history, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel and have pressed the alarm bell to learn more. These videos are made possible by our brilliant patrons over at Patreon and our YouTube sponsors. Visit our Patreon or press the sponsorship button to learn more about the perks. This is the Kings and Generals channel and we will catch you on the next one.